this is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, where we educate, motivate, inspire, and liberate your consciousness. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Um, I'm enjoying doing these in person once again, and I get to introduce Tanya Viegas, and she is one of our new practitioners over at the Sherman Oaks location, but she's not new to doing healing and is a Reiki master as well as crystal healer and yoga facilitator. And we have a very interesting topic that I think is so timely for the state of the world and everything that's going on. And it's really talking about how pain is gold and how struggle is your superpower and I think that there's a lot of people that are struggling right now um, with life with the world with grief with loss with change whatever it may be and so what a perfect time to discuss it so Tanya thank you for joining thank you for having me I'm honored Ah, honored for you to be here. So I want to, you know, get into a little bit of, uh, I always like people to learn a little bit about you, you Mm -hmm. know, like, um, because a large portion is about understanding, like, how did you even get onto this healing path? Yeah. Yeah, I always think that it's fascinating to say, why did somebody decide to learn healing? Right. Yeah. So definitely, um, I guess it'd have to start off when I was 16 years old and um, I was in a car accident that put me in a coma for about a week and a half and um, I suffered a traumatic brain injury and I was hospitalized for a month doing a bunch of different rehabs and um, it was just so interesting being in the hospital and just having to do therapies where I had to walk down the stairs and I just remember glimpses of my memory like okay I was just running down the stairs in high school you know I was a junior in high school and it was just a a big culture shock or like a big change to my world especially having some brain trauma too and being in a coma for over a week I mean all of that is you know, people, we had somebody that uh, we know really well that's part of Liberate Family that he was in a coma for about a month mm-hmm. and just like a relearning mm-hmm. and also his trauma was a little bit more severe. So not being able to to move or coordinate or there's a part of your brain that thinks you should do things like what you're saying, but then the rest of you just can't, you know, and it's like, wait, wait a second here. Like, I know I can do this. All my memories are of doing this. Why is this so hard for me? Right. Definitely. So it was a huge trip, you know, having my friends come into the room and making jokes and I couldn't laugh. Like I, I could not respond. It was just like this stoic, well wow. type of me and so um, I guess you know afterwards because I looked just so fine um, and my insurance wasn't the greatest I didn't receive physical treatment so there was no physical therapy there was no um, massage or any any type of physical treatment so I just really walked around with trauma and sure, I had speech therapy, but it didn't treat everything else. On top of that, I also didn't see a psychologist for any talk therapy. Wow. And so it was like years later when I was a senior in college, I found myself so anxious. And um, I almost put myself on a medical leave in, in college and I wasn't going to graduate. I was like, I can't do this anymore. You know, um, I don't know what's going on and finally the doctor was like well you need to see a psychologist so I started seeing a therapist at CSUN thank God and I learned that all this stuff wasn't gone you know (laughs) I thought okay what's gone is in the past you know I come from a Latino family that's like tough love and um, you kind of get over it in a sense there's no emotion that you talk Mm. about and so well, plus it's kind of the culture of teenagers, right? You know, in general, no matter what culture you come from, there's that mindset that invincibility, let's just move forward, yes. not thinking too much of the future, be in the moment type of, you know, like, okay, and that craving to, I want to be normal again, yeah. right? I just want to get back to having fun with my friends and, and life. Right. And you're 
walking around with this huge life-shaking event mm -hmm. that literally knocked you into a hospital room for over a month or a month, yeah. right? You know. Uh -huh. Um, okay, so now you're you're needing to see a therapist. You're in senior year. You were almost ready to give up. Glad that you didn't, and that you had a counselor that helped you out with that. You know, yeah. and uh, because you already put through so much effort, you know, to walk away at the end. And so, do you go start start seeing a therapist, or what happened? Yeah, I started seeing a therapist, and that was for years you know, um, went and saw a therapist, talk therapy, but again, body wasn't involved. So there was no somatic involvement, you know, it was just talk therapy and it was more like, I guess, logical thinking through and, you know, different ways of managing, um, anxiety, but it was, until it wasn't until I actually, uh, changed careers from behavior therapy to, me discovering what it is I was going to do, I was working as a logistics clerk in a warehouse and I was just so anxious. I was waking mm -hmm. up at like 3, 4 in the morning like, what is my life going to be like now that I'm not going to have this career that I went to college <laughs> for and all of that, you know, uh, all of this unknown. And um, that was when I was like, you know what, I can just start yoga. I could start practicing yoga early mornings and see how that works out mm. and that's how it all kind of started wow so you started going to yoga you started feeling different you started probably i'm guessing having some of that anxiety go away yeah and so then was then was it yoga to yoga teaching or to training certification for a uh, teacher uh, for yoga and then reiki or did reiki come in the middle of that how did that all kind of come into play yeah so yoga was there and then i just knew i had always gone to see a yoga tip therapist uh, get yoga treatment and I just knew that I I wanted to be attuned to be that Reiki practitioner so I actually got my Reiki certification before okay. becoming a yoga teacher okay okay and while I was doing that I was making crystal jewelry because I was using crystals to help me with anxiety as well nice so it kind of all came together at such a interesting time where i was i found yoga then i found crystals and then i was like i can amplify these crystals with reiki and so that came and then was yoga it was the last certification that i got Oh, even though that it was the thing that started you, it was the last certification that you got yeah very interesting and you know your your topic today is really about struggle being your superpower, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So thank you so much for sharing like your history and how you got into everything and why you you know why you are the practitioner that you are today, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then where did you find that kind of belief system or kind of grab a hold of that ideology of uh, struggle being the superpower? Yeah, so I feel like it was really the catalyst to me jumping into this realm of really uh, self-improvement and a really big lifestyle sh shift. Um, I stopped drinking. Mm -hmm. I stopped eating foods that weren't nourishing to my body. You know, I started focusing more on vegetables and clean eating. Um, started noticing these shifts once I made those changes, um, you know, sensitivity wise and um, what it brought up. But I feel like these big pain factors that we have in our lives can either, you know, push us to be completely something transform, do something transformative, or kind of we can get stuck in these wounds. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew there was so much more outside of these wounds then then you know I, I didn't want them anymore and I don't want them anymore you know I, yeah. I, I don't want to hold on to them and I know we can as you know our ways of being you know as humans where we hold on to that pain yeah absolutely and it's it is an important distinction to look at and say you know because the I mean there's of course there's a continuum in between, but there's a lot of people that use the, the 
the situations that happen in their life and say, how do I overcome from this? How do I grow from this? How do I use this as like a cannon to pull me to the next? And then there are that group of people that get stuck in it so much that it literally becomes part of their identity that they feel like they're in the quicksand constantly sinking, even though it's something that happened in the past, right? Yeah. You know, and um, I hope those that are tuning in or listening is, you know, and there's nothing wrong. If you've, if you've been in the quicksand and you've been sinking, that's fine. You know, it's, it's, it's understanding now maybe there's something that clicks like a light switch that you say, okay, well, if other people don't have to keep on being in the quicksand, maybe I don't have to be in the quicksand. And maybe I can use this as a rocket too, right? Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, definitely, you know, and, and it started to affect my body. Like, I actually felt pain because of, I was so tense, mm-hmm. you know? So it, it was just a whole thing where I literally felt like I was walking underneath a cloud, like a dark cloud, and it was just always raining on me. Yeah, you were in the quicksand or you were in the yeah. dark cloud, you know? And then, and then, so what shifted for you that you said, I don't, you know, like, what was that catalyst that said, okay, enough is enough, I'm ready? Um, I think it was just trying to figure out what my next move was as far as career wise. I knew so much about all of the modalities because I was going through them and I was literally going from one to the other. Like I had morning appointments filled with different practitioners and I was like, you know what? I love yoga, I love crystals, and I love Reiki, you know, like, I think because my mind also works a different way, you know, I'm not so great with, like, logistical things and remembering all those little fine details, but, like, I know healing, Mm -hmm. you know, like, that's all me, and and I live through it, and I'm still moving through it, you know, I I believe that we're always continually healing, Mm -hmm. and it never ends. No, because then we just get to the next level, the next place, and then we have to heal or transform from something different because we're constantly being wounded, right? You know? It's yeah. like It's like saying that you can keep on driving your car and never get a tune-up. Like, you, you need to get it tuned up. I mean, there's wear and tear, the brake pads, the different things. you got to, like... You know, it might be like the brake pads this time, oil next week, the, the, this, that, but you're, you're, you're putting it out to maintain it, right? Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's not like life happens. We're going through life. So right. different things are gonna wear at us in different ways and we're going to have to address them at some point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so it was just me realizing like, okay, I either step into this role or I, st- I keep trying to find because it it was connected very much with like my career and everything seemed to fall apart every job that I took was just it didn't work it didn't stick and it was almost like the universe was telling me like you got to do bigger you know like you are far more of what you think you are you're just playing really small Tanya and that freaked me out you know but um, that was really it. It was me just having that trust and knowing that what I went through is what I give back. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And so you've literally taken your pain and made it gold, made a career out of it, and allowed your struggle to be your gift for right. growth and opportunity. Now, how do you merge all of those things together in like a session, right? Yeah, so... And what, what are sessions like, and then what is, what is like, your yoga like, you know, so people kind of have an understanding. Yeah, definitely. So for a session, you know, um, it's regular. You'll be lying down, and I use elements of yoga, which I know to all of us, we think of yoga, and we think of all the postures and the practices, um, but it includes breath work. It includes... Um, chanting and mudras and and these breath works also have different mudras to hold and um, it includes that mindfulness aspect Um, so there's breath work involved there's um, me placing crystals on the body Mm -hmm. so that uh, crystals also bring their own energy and their own balance as as well as reiki so it's really an enhanced experience Mm. 
for the uh, client and it's not always the same so if I feel like there needs to be something different then I'll include something else and something will just pop up where I'll just kind of like go with the flow and make something um, for them or curate it uh, particularly for their needs mm. um, and it seems to be pretty big and transformative for um, the people that experience it and as far as the classes um, those are the uh, Reiki and crystal infused yoga classes where I'll set out crystals around the room and I'll have, I'll lead a yoga class, a yoga practice, and then I'll leave a big chunk of the end of class, so Shavasana, mm -hmm. for that Reiki experience. And that as well, you know, there's an embodiment, there's that grounding that both crystals and Reiki bring. So you really walk out feeling kind of like this refresh oh, yeah, version sure. of yourself. Yeah, and energized, cleared, restored, you mm -hmm. know, grounded, like you said. Yeah. Uh -huh. that's, a, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great hybrid. And I always like, you know, feel like the Savasana should be like longer, you know, like, yeah. like I'm like there and I'm like, oh God, oh, Can it's I? over already. Yeah. <laughs> like I just was getting into like a meditation. So that's a, that's a beautiful that you take it and you allow it to be a little bit longer yeah. and deeper and then you provide the energy work. Uh -huh. Now I know some of your sessions like you're going to be doing doing yoga with us it is um, remote and eventually in person too but yes. I mean uh, so how does that differ and can you explain like how people still get that energy and that exchange even even through a screen because I think a lot of people have a hard time like grasping that you yeah know? definitely so energy works beyond time and space and um, we all experience energy even when I've noticed when I'm watching like the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, like I feel the energy that they're putting out, you know, when they're upset or yelling. But that's just an example of energy being transmuted or transmitted through time and space. You know, mm -hmm. sure, those sitcoms happened years ago, but you still feel it. So Reiki is um, super intelligent where it just goes beyond time and space and it there is a thing called distant Reiki you know mm -hmm. it was developed before the pandemic so it's nothing new um, but that's how you still feel the effectiveness of the Reiki yeah sometimes people can even feel it more yeah right mm -hmm. um, when they do remote or distant healings whether it's because they're more comfortable in their space or their own home or or whether you know there's less distractions it's not a class or a group or whatnot yeah. um, you know, uh, I know that when people work on like animals and stuff like that, a lot of times the distance or the remote can be even more powerful. Yeah. And yeah. so these uh, these sessions and these classes. So when they're when they're doing, you know, yoga, of course, I think everybody now with the pandemic, it's that you can you can do the classes you can do you know people were doing that I mean if anybody had a Gaia membership before I mean that was loaded with or even back in DVD times of doing fitness and other kind of exercises on it but knowing that energy can go through and knowing that you carry that certain energy and like you said the housewives you know that energy <laughs> goes through that screen too just as much so be careful what kind of content you watch you know yes. <laughs> because you're getting that vibration you're getting that that um, those emotions you're getting that negative or positive feedback that's coming from the people that you're observing and the information you're consuming and so at the end, they, they have that powerful experience. Now, you do also some of your your sessions that you do, just like you said, like, you know, Reiki, and I think that, that bears to be said again, distant healing, distant Reiki, distant energy healing has been around. I mean, it's things that have been taught. You know, I learned Reiki like 15 years ago when there was a component that was all distant Reiki in that, you know, so this is way pre-pandemic, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. pre-Zoom, you know? Yes. And so, so this isn't something that now maybe people are allowing themselves to sample it a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, because they have no choice, right? Yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, with that, when somebody gets like a session, whether they come in for a session uh, with you or they're remote, what's some things that you they can expect and why is this beneficial, right? You know, what are some of the benefits and when would somebody really kind of 
be best served to either get a session or come to a Reiki crystal yoga class infused or you know like like if somebody's listening like what would be like the light of like I need that and I should need that now you know yeah yeah so um definitely what you can expect is feeling like you are kind of light well not kind of you're you're lighter you feel like you can actually take deep breaths you know, you don't feel so small. I know that we can get really tense and tight and you feel looser. Mm -hmm. You just, in inside, internally, you feel a shift. And I would say that you feel a smooth flow even, mm -hmm. you know, like through your body. Um, it's beneficial because it helps to, you know, it helps with sleep, it helps for de-stressing, mm -hmm. relaxation, um, it helps for any physical or emotional ailments that we go through. Um, it helps to realign and rebalance our chakra system, so our energy system. Um, and it, it helps too for us to connect to something higher than us. You know, so our spirituality, um, maybe it's a little dormant. It will kind of spark it and let you know that there's something more that's out there that's, yeah. um, that's really wanting you to be better and feel better. Um, and, you know, with more and more sessions, I believe that you'll gain a lot of awareness, you know, okay. about yourself and even... I would say like grow that intuition or that subtlety in whatever way it comes to you. So you're, so you're saying if somebody's a little stressed out or if they're having, um, feeling off balance, that's the time to come. But also if they're looking to grow, grow as a person, have more um, intuition, mm -hmm. development, it just even just the evolution, right, in yeah. general. Mm -hmm. So it can be something that's done as a tool for expansion or deeper deeper work, right? Yeah. And it can also be done as something that can be for a catalyst for healing or overcoming uh, emotions or certain circumstances in, in one's life, right? Yes. How often should somebody get a session? Um, I think it depends on what the individual needs and um, is seeking. Um, definitely for heavy healing or more healing, I recommend like at least once a week. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, you know, you do other practices like working out and meditation and, um, you know, you, you keep a practice of, you know, filtering out your energy, whether it's with baths or, you know, going out in the sun. Um, if it's more like maintenance, I would say like twice a month, maybe once a month. But again, it's all dependent on how you're feeling. You know, if you feel like, oh, I'm so heavy, like I need a lot more, I think, yeah, definitely take advantage and do it once a week. Yeah. Some of my yeah. clients do it twice a week. Yeah, especially mm -hmm. if people are going through things. Mm -hmm. And then for like, and especially like y y all the different types of, of of treatments and things like that, you know, like some people like to do yoga every day, right? Right. Um, if the combination of yoga and mudra is mixed in with crystals and Reiki, you know, it's, it's a little bit different than just a healing. It's also uh, restorative, re rejuvenating, replenishing. Right. Yeah. And with anything, you know, even acupuncture, the more you do it, the more benefit you get. Yeah. You know, and the more other practices you do, the more, yeah, again, the more you get and the better results and benefits you feel and you get. It's amazing. Yeah. So if there's a, anything else that you'd like to talk about, what would it be? Ah, uh, uh, I would just say it's important for all of us to really maintain and know when our energy levels kind of go awry mm -hmm. and I think the biggest component is like not relying on these methods or modalities to to be it like okay I'm gonna get a Reiki session and I'm not gonna do my own work you know yeah. I think that's really important is to again have your own practice at home and 
either meditation or whatever that is, it's important to always keep and maintain it so that you don't feel like I didn't get a a session, I'm not feeling well and everything tumbles from there, you know? So I think that's important. Okay. Anything else that you want to touch on as far as the struggle, the collective consciousness and how we're really, you know, using this as like a gift, you know, like that, that this is that gold that you talk about, you know, and how people can maybe, you know, whether they get a session or not about how they can help that mind shift a little bit for them. Yeah. um, I think that this whole pandemic has really caused everyone to look internally you Mm -hmm. know and see what uh those important aspects are in your life you know is it the clothes is it the car or is it you being okay with yourself and being okay with your family and your loved ones like Mm -hmm. do you feel like you have a community and some and people that you can reach out to and um, you know, kind of re reshifting what your priorities were, you know, and I know even for me, that whole capitalistic mentality of like, I have to be working every <laughs> moment of the day because otherwise, and I'm going to feel, you know, like I'm not helping and, and spreading my, you know, skills or love with everybody or I'm just this lazy person and you know there's yeah. this dichotomy of like Gary V who's a great you know um, entrepreneur coach but like go 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 and what are you doing because if you're not doing anything then you're just like not really fulfilling what you're supposed to be doing and then there's that like but I'm really tired yeah. you know like and finding that middle ground and and not pushing yeah you know and that's it and being knowing that we all have seasons Mm -hmm. right i think that's one of the things that people forget is that they're just like the planet has seasons we have seasons animals have seasons you know and and so when we realize that we're a part of nature, we're not separate from nature, it would make sense that we are in cycles or we're in, uh, we're in these types of seasons, right? And so, I mean, even like the moon, it has 28 day cycle. Women have a 28 day cycle. Like animals, some of them go into hibernation and then they're more active during the, the summer and the spring and they're waking up and you know, you see it with the trees and especially in the, in the uh, more, uh, northern climates where they have that change of season but you know the fall is you know things are kind of falling apart you know a little bit everything's kind of like you know you're harvesting you're doing that you're in you know, that and then you go into this hibernation mode this place of stillness where at the surface it looks like nothing's happening right yeah. but then it's the spring in the spring you see these little sprouts you see these new leaves growing and it's like this growth and it's a lot of movement happening a lot of like um transformation you would say and then summer it's like everything's like in full blown it almost looks like there's not much change but everything's vibrant and it's like full and then only to go into the fall again of having that harvest Mm -hmm. and it's like if that exists for like a tree why wouldn't that exist for us and there's going to be times where you want to be um a little bit more hibernative and just be tired and be like in that process of of internal change and it might not look like anything is happening on the surface but internally things are shifting only to then have a period in your life where you feel like spring and there's maybe rapid growth and you're doing so much and all these little things but it's not quite there yet it's like you're working on things you're working on getting in shape you're working on on a new project you're working on a new like school or this or that and then the summer, it's like, ah, oh, things are there. Yeah. You know? And then you finally reap the rewards in the fall. Yeah. Only to then do the cycle all over again. Right. And if we get that, we can get that there's times that to not do anything. So it's like, you know, with your example, there's times where, yeah, of course, go on and do, 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 do. But if you don't also pause. Yeah. Right? You burn out. You burn out. And then are you really growing? Right? Mm-hmm. If you don't go through that cycle, that tree goes through that cycle. Even in like, we're in Southern California here, and 
I go hiking all the time. Like trees, the leaves fall and shed in fall just like they do other places, you know? Yeah. You might not have it with the palm trees per se, but like, you know, if there if there's other trees that are leafy trees, those tree those leaves die and fall and change color and you know, like even in 80 degrees it's happening, right? Because they know they have to go through the cycle, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We need that too. Yeah. It's so important. And I feel like having plants really helped me see that, you know? I'm like, oh my gosh, you are so beautiful and full. And then now I see, you know, the leaves are falling and I'm like, okay, Tanya, this too, you know, this is good for you. And yeah. and so it really helps to kind of ingrain that in my mind. And it's good for all of us to know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Tanya, besides here at Liberate, Liberate Sherman Oaks, and our live stream on Thursday mornings for yoga, and hopefully soon in person as well as the world opens up a little bit more, um, where else can they find you? What are some of your social handles? If you're if you have a public persona and stuff like that, we can link them down below. But if you want to say it out loud too, because yeah. we have a lot of people that just listen in audio. Yeah. So my Instagram is Healing with Tanya. And my website is also healingwithtanya.com. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you guys know ours, Liberate Yourself. Thank you for joining. Um, please like, subscribe, share all of that good stuff that um, is always asked of you, any video that you watch, but it really does help. Um, the more that if you like, if you even just put a thumbs up in the comment section, um, algorithms are a thing, and the more that we have engagement, the more people will see this and maybe get the changes that they need in their life. So. Thank you for your support. Thank you for helping us spread our messages and keep our um, podcasts and other content alive. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you. If you enjoyed this conversation, like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want some more amazing resources on your path of liberation, head over to liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Connect with us on Facebook, Instagram at Liberate Hollywood, all one word, or Liberate Emporium, all one word. Until next time, liberate yourself. Hi everybody, I'm Christina, founder of Liberate. This is our mascots, Miss Piggy and Mr. Chew. Liberate is like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory for spirituality. You might wonder what the heck that is. And so basically Liberate is a place of sheer magic, activating and reigniting that magic into you so that you can live your fullest potential and most fulfilled life. When you walk through the door, you're gonna see magic everywhere you look. You look down and you see a crystal floor made with over 10,000 pounds of crystals. You say that's a lot, but I know I laid them and had to do numerous trips to the crystal store to buy more and more crystals. There's all of these beautiful, magical gemstones that are activating and creating healing from the beneath and the surface. You see the tree of life when you first walk in. You go upstairs and every room has its custom sacred geometry mural in it. And then you notice that each of the rooms are labeled with different uh, names of deities or archangels from different traditions and, and religions from all over the world. This is Liberate. Liberate is a space of union. Liberate is a space of creativity. Liberate is a space of expansion. And we're here to help heal you, transform, and help you rediscover yourself.